Hi Nick, so you had a, a quick question about buffers. You're wanting to buffer uh, the same layer or a couple of different layers within a view, but I'm just going to show you both and there's a number of different ways to, to buffer vector layers. So let's uh, see what we can do about that. So I'm just going to stick on some base data that I can quickly capture and then buffer. So let's just start with the open topo map for the whole of the world and then let's zoom in down here somewhere. Let's go find a river that we can maybe buffer. Okay, so here's a little river. So I'm going to create a vector layer quickly. And you'll notice when we add something, um, a, a layer from Quick Map Services, the default projection is EPSG3857, which is in meters. You can see it's in meters down here. And it is called pseudo transverse Mercator. Now that's that's quite all right. We can leave it at that. But I'm just going to start off uh, to show you a potential issue by just going back to WGS84. Okay, so we've got a coordinate reference system here of EPSG4326, which is a geographic coordinate reference system. And you can see now the coordinates are in decimal degrees. So let's say you were capturing uh, using this projection. So let's just quickly go and create a new layer. And for this first example, I'll just create an arbitrary layer. And uh, I'll just stick it on my desktop in a folder. I'll just call it buffers. All right, so what should we call this? Let's call this um, places. And we'll say save. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new uh, vector layer. It's going to be a point layer. And I'm going to use the same projection as my view or my project. Uh, let's just go with one new column. Okay, so that's a new column in the new field. We'll say OK. And Dehoop Village. Let's capture Dehoop Village. So we're going to start an editing session. Wait, before I do that, let's just go and change this size and color to something a little bit more recognizable when it loads. So something a little bigger and greener. And we'll start an editing session. We'll capture a new feature. And we'll capture. We'll give it an ID of zero. Now this is all arbitrary. Uh, and we'll just call it the uh, village. And we'll say, oh, that might be a capital D, I don't know. We'll say OK. There's the Hoop village. We can stop editing and say save. Now buffering something is easy enough, generally speaking. So you're wanting to buffer something by a number of different values. So I'm going to start off by just coming in a bit tighter to Dehoop Village. And let's say we wanted to put a buffer on this vector layer of maybe let's go two let's go three kilometers. Okay, so three kilometers is is uh three thousand meters. So you may already uh be thinking that there's going to be an issue using these projections and you would be right but let's just start with uh, showing you what happens so I'm going to go buffer and then I'll open the buffer okay so I just search for the buffer and it's only got one vector layer so it's telling me I can only vec uh, buffer one thing so I said 3,000 or 3 kilometers so 3,000 meters and you look there's a potential error here it's, it's trying to tell me something it's telling me that um, the coordinate reference system for this layer is in degrees Okay, so effectively what we do, we're telling it is we want to buffer by 3,000 degrees, which is crazy. That'll give us a massive buffer. So we needed to, to have this in, um, in meters, so some sort of projection in meters, transverse Mercator meters. Okay, so let's just see what happens if we just go ahead and buffer this. So I'm going to create a temporary layer just to show you what, what would happen. So we run that, and we close that, and now you immediately see that that is, that is quite a big area and it covers the entire globe. <laughs> so 3,000 degrees uh, takes you off into space somewhere. So that doesn't work. All goes around the globe 100 times, whatever. So, so that's the problem there, is that that layer is in meters, and so when you try buffer it, the program wants to buffer it in, me in, um, in decimal degrees. So that, sh that should be in meters. So it's currently in decimal degrees, buffers in decimal degrees, massive issue. So let's remove this layer and show you first of all if you haven't done this what you would have to do so i'm just going to go to my previous zoom 
I would need to re-project this. So I'm going to export this. So I'll just use that same file format, the shape file. I'll just call it places. And just so I know which layer is which, I'm going to call it TM for transverse mercator. And I'm going to go LO21. So it's going to be transverse mercator, WGS, or well effectively should be WGS84, and LO21. Now you don't have to name things like this, but this is just so that I know what the projection is going to be. So I'm going to say save. And now we need to choose that projection. So I'm going to go to my coordinate reference systems. I'm going to type in how to best hook. OK, there we go, how to best hook. Scroll down here. And I wanted to choose 21, so I'm going to choose that one. So it's 2049. And you can see when you do choose the uh, various LOs or um, longitudinal lines that effectively are your point of tangency or your, your point of contact, you'll see they move across South Africa. So we want to use 21 because that was closest to our area. I see 20 down there. So we could have used uh, 19, I guess. But let's use 21. We'll say OK. And then OK. And it should add a new layer to your project. And what I'll do is I'll just copy the style and paste it on there. And Symbology and then just remove the original one. And now we're going to buffer again, buffer that same, well, buffer this layer, and this time choose 3000, and create a temporary layer again, we'll say run, and close, and there we go. So now you'll see the buffer is quite a bit smaller, because that is now 3000 meters, and we can measure it. Let's quickly change this layer styling slightly. Oops, not that one. I uh, will make this layer rendering. I'll make this 50% opaque. There we go. So now we can see it. And if we had to measure the distance, that should be 3,000 meters from edge to center. So it's close. What we could do is when we buffer it is just add a number of vertices so that this isn't so, so segmented. The more vertices you add, the uh, more even or, or round or smooth the edge would be. OK. So that is how you would buffer something, uh, quite simply using uh, a value that you punch in. Now let's say we have a number of different features. Okay, so there's a feature. Let's capture another one. So what can we say? Uh, let's go something silly. We'll just say beach. Beach. Uh, something else there. Well, we can make that two. These uh, these IDs are, are not really really important at the moment. We'll call this Weir. Do I, is that how you spell Weir? Weir. Ah, that looks right. Okay, so now we've got three different vector l uh, vector features, and we can open them up. See there they are. What we can now do is we can create a new column, which will be a distance column. And it's going to be a whole number, and it's going to be in meters. So now what I want to do is I'm going to, to populate these values for the various features. So let's say um, from De Herp, we're going to stick with, from De Herp, we're going to stick with uh, 3,000. So this is in meters, 3,000. From the beach, that one will make, let's make that 4,000. And then from the weir, we'll just make it 2,000. 2,000. OK. That's all meters. So, so when you're working in meters, if you've got anything in kilometers, you just need to make sure it converted to meters when you, when you enter this data. OK, so we're going to save that. Ah, did that save? Why didn't that save? Let's just double check. I'll open that and close that, ag close that and open that again. That's odd. Let's start that again. So beach, I said 4,000 meters. Save. Okay, maybe I didn't push enter. Doesn't matter. Now I've got my values set. Okay, so now what we can do is we can tell the program to buffer uh, on specific distances. So there's 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 the buffer that we had been using. 
Now let's just double check if there's an option here to choose a column to buffer on. So we've got a set distance. Okay, so that only allows us to, to set one distance for all features. That's no good. So I'm just going to go into my little toolbox here and I'm going to search for bu buffers. Buffers, uh, maybe buffer. Okay, there's a whole bunch of different buffers and there's one where you can use a variable distance. Yeah, at the bottom here, you see this little Saga tool. So this Saga, these Saga GIS applications or algorithms are used by QGIS as well. It's kind of integrated into the software. And we're going to use the one uh, called variable distance buffer. We effectively were using a fixed distance where we're only allowed to enter one entry into one value. Now we're going to tell the program which, uh, or the algorithm, which column to use as the distance column for the buffer. We're not going to scale it. The uh, this uh, Actually, I'm not too sure what this is. Let's just leave that for now, see if that makes a difference. Arc vertex distance. Okay, so distance between vertices in degrees. I'm not sure why that's in degrees. Let's just leave it at 5. You can We can come back and change this and see what it does. And then we'll dissolve the buffers. Well, we'll create a temporary layer. Let's run that. And close. Oh, it's still running. Best let it do, do its thing. Hmm. Okay, when it's finished, it will add a new buffer layer to your project. And these don't touch each other. We're I was hoping these would intersect so I could show you uh, the difference. But now you can see they've uh, they've got um, they've each got a different uh, buffer level there. Okay, so what we can do maybe just to show you how that works, I'm just going to remove these buffer layers, and I'm going to change it so that uh, the buffers actually intersect each other. So let's start editing. We'll open up the attribute table. And for the beach, let's change that to 5,000. So now the distance between uh, these two is probably less than 8 kilometers. So they, these buffers are going to overlap now. So we'll save that and run that variable distance buffer again. So we're going to set the distance as the buffer, leave this all as default, and say run. And when it's finished, we can close that. Now you can see there would have been an overlap here, but because of the setting that we chose here called dissolve buffers, it dissolves them all into one feature. So now when you go back into the attribute table, you'll see there's only one feature. Okay, so now if we treat this all as one area, it's going to calculate the the same area for everything. So what we can do is if we uh, if we want to work out the the area for that feature as well as this feature we now need to split it and there's a tool called uh, I think it's multi you're gonna split multi parts into single parts so multi or just maybe just type in single here single multi part to single part okay so we're gonna this is this this feature is made up of multiple parts we want them to each be single parts so we are going to use the buffer and create a temporary layer again and close. Now if we open the single part uh, layer that's just been added, there should be two values there or two records for each. Okay, there we go. So we've got two records for each. So now if we wanted to calculate the areas, that's easy enough. Let's just go in and say, open the attribute table. We'll start editing. Make this a bit bigger so I can see what's going on. And I'm going to go straight in and use my um, field calculator. And I'm going to call this area double H for area in hectares. It's going to be a decimal number, precision of one, let's say. And all I do now is I say dollar sign area, which will give me the area in meters. And then I just say divided by 10,000 will give us the area in hectares. And I'll say OK. Now we've got two values which have which has been have been added to this new column that I've uh, created, and if we use the information tool and just clicked on those features, you'd be able to see that this area one is uh, 1,254 hectares. This area is 10,478 hectares. So that is how you would buffer 
multiple things uh, using different buffer distances. So you could either go in and do them singularly or use the uh, variable buffer distance. Variable buffer distance saga tool. But in that instance, you do need to have a column. Oops. A column that has the actual distance that you're looking to buffer with. Now, just to point out, I quite like using, I'm just going to save that quickly. I quite like using temporary layers when I do work with stuff like this. But ultimately, if you close this project down and open it up again, uh, these temporary layers get stored in cache and they will now disappear. So if you want to then keep this, you either need to, when you create your variable distance buffer, like this, wow, what am I doing? I need to choose the correct vector to buffer with. You either need to not create a temporary layer, and you click on this button here and you say save to file, and you just go choose a place on your drive here, let's just call this buffer output. Okay, now this time what it'll do is it's going to create a, a, a permanent layer and save it onto your drive. I actually don't like that space there, so I'm just going to just remove that space. I'm going to call it the space in the name. Uh, I'm not happy with having uh, space in the name, so I've just got a capital where the second letter, second word starts, and that all is the same. So we can say run, and that shouldn't take too long. It's much the same as the other one. Close. Okay, so now we actually have a new layer or a new uh, shape file in our project folder. So if we quickly add a directory here, just to show you what I mean by that. Uh, it was, what did I call it? For the buffers, buffers, there it is. Now if we open that, there's our new uh, layer that's created from that output. The, the reason I don't like always doing that is because that layer is not useful to me now because I needed to split it into single parts. So very often I'm, I quite happily accept the single, uh, sorry, the temporary layer option. And then when I'm finished, what I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll right click on a layer and I'll say make permanent. And then I just do the same thing. I just go and find a place for it. Let's just call it buffers final. Okay. And the shape file is fine. All this, uh, all this other stuff is fine. I'll say okay. And then what you'll see is this little icon next to my layer will change and will change. It'll disappear. So that little chip is indicating a, a little icon for a memory chip. It looks like a little cockroach, but it's a memory chip icon. And now that it's disappeared, the program is trying to tell you now that it's no longer in cache. Uh, it's a permanent layer. So the only difference is, uh, is well, the only thing we need to do now is just make sure we change the name. So if we if we actually added that from scratch, it would accept the name of the original file. But since it came from a temporary file, we ha it hasn't changed the the name in the layers panel yet. So you could go in there and change that if you wanted to, or just re-add it. It's up to you really. Uh, so you can change it there, or you can just right click and say rename, and say. buffer various whatever so so yeah does that answer your question I just buffered um, points that everything I showed you would apply for, for for areas and lines as well so polygons and lines essentially it's the the same idea I just used points uh, just for some simplicity so let me know if that worked for you um, chat to you again soon cheers